Nothing says Soho like having a Canadian on stage. <laughs> the first Canadians arrived in Soho in 1598. I think that's right, Dan. You can check me on that. Uh, it's a little strange to, to wait for the last reader to do general housekeeping, but um, the, that's what's fallen upon me. I hope this won't eat into my time. <laughs> First of all, my name is Craig Taylor. I, I uh, have been here 12 years and I still pronounce it wrong. Even tonight I was called Fred by someone at my table. <laughs> so if you are interested in the book, please don't buy anything by Fred Taylor. Uh, the Soho Theater has uh, seven safety exits. All of them are well marked. In the event of an emergency, under, under your seats you may find a rain poncho that bears the words Soho Theatre. It's now raining on the front. <laughs> this was handed to me about five minutes before I got on stage. There are also vouchers for one pound sandwiches at the Coach and Horses on Greek Street. Um, these vouchers will not get you sandwiches, as the sandwiches no longer exist, but the staff will tell you about them. They were a lifeline for me and many writers who work in the area and who traverse London during the day. Because when you have to pay to stand still in London, it helps to know where you can buy one pound sandwiches. Uh, you will also find in your seat a list of upcoming shows at the Soho Theatre. Toilets. There are nine toilets in the Soho Theatre. <laughs> three for men, three for women, and two with access for the disabled. There is also one toilet for Soho buskers and human statues, which is fitted with a Brendan Power Washer 1450 PSI, <laughs> which is the chosen brand for... Uh, for stripping paint. <laughs> the Soho Theatre has for years supported Soho's human statues. You'll notice they are different from the Covent Garden human statues, perhaps less brash. <laughs> uh, employees of the Soho Theatre are happy to instruct you towards the narrow, darkened Soho streets and can recommend a number of awnings for the first kiss of a relationship. If there's anyone out here on some sort of date tonight, I'm advised, before I get started with my own presentation, that the staff here and upstairs is uh, here to help you with your first Soho kiss. In, in researching my own book, I spoke to uh, interviewees who spoke of different kinds of Soho kisses, including the brash Dean Street kiss, which should happen as you are walking north up Dean Street. You will see and this is available in the literature on hand, <laughs> that the final tender comment should happen by the time you pass Black's member club, allowing for said comment to settle into your partner's mind and provoke a smile before at Meard Street, you guide your partner out of the flow of traffic and kiss. And <laughs> employees of the Soho Theater are happy to advise but are not legally bound to ensure the quality of the kiss, and they no longer provide help with the mechanics of the kiss. As most of you will know, there is also the ecstatic Old Compton Street Embrace and the Govinda's Pure Vegetarian Peck. The 3 a.m. Hanway Place messy propped up in a reeking doorstep snogathon while the fried onions from the nearby vendor kiss is not recommended. I hope this isn't eating into my time. Um, today's soup in the bar upstairs is French onion. The staff of the Soho Theatre would be more than happy to arrange travel home for you 
but I advise audience members that no member of staff will advise on any other SOHO activities, especially illegal activities. For instance, the procurement of banned substances, or even those weird legal poppers you can get. <laughs> no one, myself included, will help during any part of this evening with the procurement of male, female, or transsexual prostitutes. I think the bar staff can back me up on this one. <laughs> Nor can they give you information. Nor can they give you information on that woman who is allegedly a model on the first floor. <laughs> or that, and I, I uh, am gonna quote here, hot Spanish guy who works at GAY on Saturdays. <laughs> If anyone in the front two rows of this production exposes themselves in the manner of the windmill, they too will be escorted out by the <laughs> stage manager. Uh, ask a member of staff for a voucher for 50p off of your next rickshaw ride. You will notice your rickshaw rider because outside, man or woman, they, uh, they have legs of stone. Rickshaw riders, as I found out while writing my book, will be able to help you in many ways the Soho Theatre cannot. <laughs> One rickshaw ro rider I spoke to, Dan, I don't know if Dan is here tonight, but he, um, he told me that Soho works on a rota these days. Bread and coffee smells in the morning, fish frying in the afternoon. And these rickshaw riders always know, as he said to me, what you want. They know the proportions of their rickshaw and how to get through space. They have what's called proprioception. <laughs> and guys who want a strip club, they huddle together on the street corner looking in both directions. <laughs> guys who want brothels, slightly more desperate walking up and down the street. The rickshaw rider will know when you want a nightclub. <laughs> if you are lonely, the Soho Theater I'm told here, does provide a full counseling service. <laughs> Though you will need to book in advance. If you are too lonely for words, then again, I refer you to the rickshaw riders. <laughs> um, readings, as, as any of you who have attended one of these before, are not, no, are not recommended. Um, but since I'm already only in my preliminaries, I'm told I can read a little bit on that subject from this book. How's my time? <laughs> um, I spoke to 90 people in this book from all over London, and of course they spoke of Soho. Wherever you live in this city, I think it's safe to say that you were drawn here for one reason or, not, or another, and tonight we've heard about, about the drinking, about the fun, about all that it offers. This is in the words of Dan Simon, a rickshaw driver, on what else Soho has to offer. I mean, God, people with foot fetishes. A friend of mine called Andre, he's a good looking chap, a big hunky pole, right? He takes the American tourist to Waterloo for 20 pounds. All the way over to Waterloo, this American chap has got this disposable camera and he's taking photographs of Andre's feet. So they get to Waterloo, the guy gets off, the guy, get, the guy pays Andre 20 pounds. The guy says to Andre, you know, I think you've got beautiful feet. I wanna buy your socks. I wanna give you 100 pounds. Andre, he's a workaholic. He, workaholic, he says, no man, I'm gonna need these socks. I'm gonna be working through the night. And the guy says to Andre, give me one sock. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred pounds. So Andre agrees. Andre gives the guy a sock and the guy gives Andre a hundred pounds. The guy's really grateful. He takes a photograph of Andre and he says, I'll be back in two weeks time to buy your other sock. <laughs> Andre says, right, okay. So anyway, Andre comes back and tells us about it. Two weeks later, he has the same trip again. Picks up the American guy, takes him to Waterloo, fares 20 pounds. The American guy pays him 20 pounds. Then he buys the other sock for a hundred pounds. So Andre made 240 pounds off this motherfucker and we all hate Andre afterwards. <laughs> a couple months after this incident happened, I got an email from a rickshaw riding friend who work, was working in New York. He goes, Dan, you're never gonna believe what happened. I took this big fat American guy for a ride and he bought my socks for $100. 
And then he showed me this photograph he had in his wallet of Andre. There are a lot of lonely people, and a lot of them do confide in rickshaw riders. I've had a lot of passengers like that myself. There was this Indian man who, was always, used, who always used to take a ride with me. He'd pay me five pounds to ride him around, and he would sit in the back completely disinterested in anything else happening around him. And we'd pull up, we'd stop, he'd nod, and then leave. I think he just did it for company. One time it was awful. I picked the guy up on Shaftesbury Ave. He gave me five pounds, looked at me with these sad, sad eyes. The guy was a mess. Obviously, he didn't take good care of himself. I get the guy into my rickshaw, and he gave me five pounds to drive around. So I drive around, and the guy never says a thing. He's so quiet, you forget he's there. Unfortunately, I did. I was riding around and riding around. <laughs> And I got completely lost in myself. <laughs> and I started thinking, and I went into a bit of a daydream. And I went on this massive excursion around looking for fares and just completely forgot he was in the back. <laughs> I was going, hey miss, where are you going? Would you like a lift? <laughs> and she was going, no, no, no. <laughs> and I was wondering what was going on, so I decided to give up, and I decided to pull into a cafe near to Frith Street to have a coffee. So I pull up, get off my rickshaw, go into the shop, grab a chocolate bar, and this guy is still sitting in the rickshaw. <laughs> just sitting there, as he always sits, not interested in anything going on around him, just slumped with his shoulders slouched forward, looking ahead, looking completely and utterly miserable. On the weekends, riders tend to finish around five o'clock in the morning. In the summertime, it's beautiful. You see the sunrise over Soho as the filth is swept off the streets by roaming bands of little caterpillar machines and the street sweepers. There's the odd pool of vomit here and there, the odd debauched looking prostitute, the odd drug dealer, nice and quiet, very few people about. You return to the base via the bridge if your base is in South London and it's very nice. I've always enjoyed riding over Waterloo Bridge, especially at night, because looking out across the Thames from Waterloo Bridge is like looking at a gemstone that's been sawn in half and displayed. All the lights sparkle like gems. It's like seeing London cut open and exhibiting its gems, riding across that bridge. You feel exhausted, but satisfied, relieved to be going home, happy that you've endured the night and looking forward to some bagel on Brick Lane, some beer at the base watching the sun rise over the Millennium Bridge, if it hasn't already risen, and then off by cycle to Brick Lane for the Sunday morning coffee and bagel, and maybe a kip in the local park. Thanks. <laughs>